I recently built this new stumpery and I'd like to get all of the wood covered in moss. That will give it that aged look. Right now it looks like a virgin garden that was just put in here, which is exactly what it is. If I can get moss to grow on it, it'll give it that aged look. But what is the best way to grow moss? In this video, I'm going to compare three common ways to grow moss to see which one works the best. This experiment was started back on April 1st, and in the video, I'll come back periodically throughout the summer to see how well the moss is growing, and then we'll have a look at it in mid-August, make a final evaluation. If you're going to try to grow some moss on wood, the best thing to do is to go in the woods and see if you can get some moss that's growing on wood already. Now I have lots of moss growing on the ground and they grow on my stones, but what I don't have is a lot of moss on trees. So I decided to get my moss from the ground. This is a slab of moss from one of my pathways. It does have some soil on the back and I've decided to just leave that soil on there. Uh, that'll add some nutrients for the moss and hopefully make it adhere a little better to the log. I've taken this log here that's been sitting here for a couple years, so it's good and old. I scraped all the bark off. I want the moss to grow on the actual wood, not on the bark. So I'm gonna try three different things. I'm gonna put some moss on here and just tie it on. I think that will grow and I think that will work quite well. And it's certainly the easiest solution. I'm also gonna take a second piece of moss and I'm gonna glue this one on. Maybe the glue makes it hold a bit better. Now, some people use crazy glue. Apparently crazy glue, when it gets wet, it actually gets stronger. And that's why they like it for this. I don't have any crazy glue, so I'm gonna use this. This is well bond. This thing glues just about anything. So I'll put some of that on and glue this moss on. The third method I'm going to try is a moss smoothie. Now I read about this all the time on the internet. You basically take some buttermilk or yogurt or some kind of dairy product. And in fact, some people use beer instead of dairy products. Put it in a blender, add some moss, blend it all up into a smoothie, and then you paint that on the wood. The idea is that the little bits of moss will start to grow and eventually cover the whole log. Now, if this method works, it would actually be pretty good because you can cover a large amount of wood with a small amount of moss. But somehow I have my doubts. I didn't have buttermilk or yogurt. So what I'm using here is moss with milk and a bit of lemon juice. The lemon juice will curdle the milk and turn it into a buttermilk substitute. And I'm gonna paint that on the log. The first piece I'm going to try is just to tie it on and I'm just gonna use some jute. I use this a lot in the garden because it decomposes in about a year to two years. And so I don't have to worry about bits of plastic in the garden. Since it decomposes, I can use it for tying up trees and things. It won't strangle anything because it's gonna break in a year anyways. That's on there quite firm and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I can water this and it'll just sit there. I think it's important that once you put the moss in place, it doesn't move. The moss really doesn't have roots, but it does attach to the surface it's sitting on. And if it's constantly moving while you water it, it's gonna be harder for it to attach. So you want it attached quite tightly and you don't want this thing to move. Now the log's moving a bit, but this is not. And that was pretty simple. I hope this one works, because that's the easiest. I'm going to try gluing some on. Oop. This glue is usually a little thicker than that, but I must have watered it down for some. This glue takes about an hour to get really hard. I won't water this till this afternoon. By that time, the glue should have set and this shouldn't move. That was actually pretty easy too, except of course you have to have glue around. 
And the final method is the moss smoothie. Now, because my moss had soil on it, this is now pretty black and it's, it's really thick. Whoa. In fact, it's more like a mud pie. There you have it. All three methods are pretty easy to make. We're back the following morning to have a look at our moss experiment. You can see that the slurry has dried up really nicely. The moss with the string on it is still there. And the moss where we use glue is stuck really tight. Now my plan is to water these every couple days for the next couple weeks to help them get established. After that, we'll let nature do its thing. Time for an update on my moss. You can see the right hand side here has almost no moss on it. In fact, I can't see any. The material from the smoothie is pretty much washed off. There's a little bit left here, but I don't see any green in it. So using the moss smoothie seems like a complete bust. That's not working at all. The second one here was tied on with string. It's still pretty green. It's not really adhering to the log yet. It's still in place. The string's holding it well. The moss is green and growing. It's attached a little bit, actually. This piece here is attached. A little bit in there. But the back here is attached too. So it's coming along nicely. The one on the left here was attached with glue. It still feels attached. I don't know if it's the glue holding it or the moss has rooted on the log, but it looks about the same as this. Some moss is growing. It's still in place. It's not moving at all, so it's pretty sturdy. So these two both look about the same. This one might have a bit more new moss growing, but they're pretty similar. I thought you might be interested in seeing my fern gully. This was a low area in the garden. I figured, well, what am I going to do with it? It's really not an important part of the garden. And I really like these ferns. These are ostrich ferns, which grow naturally in Ontario. They're quite large. They're very dramatic. And I think this is a fun little garden that takes no effort at all. Kind of on the edge of my garden, so I don't really want to uh, put a lot of effort into this part of the garden. Anyways, I love my fern gully. It's now August 10th and time to do a final assessment. As you can see, the slurry material washed completely off the log. There's a little mud left down here, but there's no moss growing whatsoever. That slurry method is a complete bust. So we've taken the string off of this one, and the moss is not very green. Now I have to admit, this was a really tough summer for growing moss. We had some really hot weather. July was very dry. We've had rain in the last few weeks, but not a lot of it. Some of this is attached. This is pretty good and back here is good. This front end isn't attached at all. I think the best thing to do for this method is to leave the string on a little longer and let this grow. But it hasn't attached very much and there's very little new moss growth. The one where we used the glue is still very firmly attached to the log. Some of the edges are loose, but this is well attached. It's a bit healthier looking than this one, although there's not a lot of green moss on here. But as I say, it's been pretty dry, so I don't really expect a lot of green moss at this time. In fact, as, I, as I'm playing with this, it's less and less attached all the time. So this moss is pretty much not attached to the log. This one still is. Out of the three methods, I actually like this one the best. Because it's still attached to the log and it's not moving, it has the best chance of getting attached over time. As our temperatures drop in the fall and we get more rain in the fall, I think this piece will do quite well. So if I had to choose between the three methods, this is the only one worth trying.
Now that you know how to grow moss on wood, it's time for you to grow your own stumpery. And I'll put a link to my stumpery videos up in the top right hand corner. Have fun in the garden.